Hello, everybody. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? I'm on my desktop right now. <laughs> you guys are so sweet. Phoenix has two seasons, hot and hotter. Yes. Let me know if you can hear me, please. Before we get started here, see me, hear me. Not got nothing from you guys yet. Let me know, please. Because we are live. Yes. Awesome, Lori. Thank you. She's on her game. All righty. Perfect. So, uh, hi, everybody. It's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. And we are working on the Kimberbell mini quilts. And today, so yesterday, I uh, went over how to, oh, my hair's all sticking up. You can see the little snowmies right there. Okay. That was the January mini quilt. And yesterday we went over how to do it step by baby step in a single needle machine. So there were a whole lot of beginner tips and tricks and things how to do from yesterday. So if you are brand new to machine embroidery, this video series is geared toward you and kind of takes you through how I do my home embroidery. I'm a home embroiderer just like you. I'm not a shop. Uh, I don't work for any particular company. I'm not an employee of anybody but myself. I'm retired. Okay. So uh, today I want to go through and work on the February one, but we're going to focus on the multi-needle. Now, a lot of you may not have a multi-needle and that's okay because when you start getting into doing embroidery, you're really going to want to think about your workflow because embroidery can be tedious when you've got a load of thread color changes that need to happen. Some of you don't mind doing them. Uh, some of you, hi, Carol, your first time on a live. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. If anybody's here in the morning and you're on the welcoming committee, you want to say hi to Carol, please do. So um, you did, Elizabeth didn't get to do the live. Oh, you had a tornado last night. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad it went past you. You've still got internet. Hooray. Yeah. Okay, so no, Dave. Well, Frito's somewhere else. Oh, she's asleep over here. You want a Frito visit? Here, let me show you how she rolls. That's it right there. There's Frito. Okay, that's it. That's all you're going to get, Dave. Sorry. <laughs> all right, so today I want to go over with you a workflow. And when I talk about workflow, I'm, I'm talking about in applique. When if you think about how applique works, and you may not know how applique works, okay? Applique is putting one piece of fabric on top of another piece of fabric. That's it, in its essence, that is applique. And when you're doing machine embroidery applique, <laughs> Dave, that's my kind of gal. Yeah, she's on, she's on guard, all right? So when you're doing machine embroidery applique, the embroidery machine will stitch out a placement line for you to tell you exactly where to put the fabric. And you would normally use a square fabric that is just a little bit larger than the placement line all the way around. And then you'll hit the button again and it will do a tack down. And then the machine stops and you pull the hoop and then you're going to, uh, mimosas in the kitchen. Awesome, Ellen. Thank you. That's what we need when we're playing with high speed needles. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> We have a virtual kitchen in our morning situation room. If you've never joined me, that's Monday through Friday uh, at 7 a.m. Central. And we just get together and visit and chit chat. And, you know, and the, the chat takes on a life of its own and they just go to town doing their own thing over there, too. OK, so you would pull the hoop and then you take your curved scissors and you trim all the way around and you get your little scrap. Right. And then you put it back in. And then there is a final stitch. That final stitch might be a satin stitch. It might be blanket. It might be an E stitch. It might be a zigzag, a bean, whatever you want. Okay. So that can be tedious when we're talking about like today, we're going to do nine different shapes. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to jump into Embrilliance. Now Embrilliance is an embroidery software 
that has been around for years and years and years, and I really like it. If you don't have any embroidery software, or maybe you have some, and it's really difficult to use because most embroidery software is difficult to use. Um, so I love Embrilliance because it's broken into different modules, okay? And I call it the Liberty Mutual of Embroidery Software. You only pay for what you need. And for those of you who are not in the U.S., Liberty Mutual is a, uh, is a car insurance company. <laughs> so anyway, you, it's, I guess it's car. I don't, anyway, that's neither here nor there. So essentials is your basic, basic that you would use to copy, cut, paste, merge designs, uh, add lettering, whatever it is that you want to do. And then there are a bunch of other different modules and you don't have to buy those if you don't need to do or you're not going to do what those modules do. Me personally, I recommend three modules. Does that finger work? It does. Three modules. OK, I recommend Embrace Essentials so that you can do those basic copy, cut, paste. OK, uh, it acts a lot like PowerPoint if you've ever played with that program from Microsoft Office. and then. Uh, Thumbnailer is a utility that you can get that allows you to see your pictures, your embroidery designs as pictures in your little folders on your computer. OK, and then Stitch Artist 2 and Stitch Artist 2 allows you to take a, a vector graphic, whether it's an SVG file or the FCM file created by the Scan and Cut, which is what I use. And in a couple of clicks, you can convert that into an applique design. OK. And Brilliance right now is having a sale and I've got a link right below in the description box. You can get a coupon code for another 10% off and it is, uh, it's written in there. The coupon code is right there and that is my affiliate link. I do earn a commission on that. So I want to throw that out up front, but you guys, I would not share this with you if I didn't love it and use it myself all the time. Why do I love in Brilliance? Again, you only pay for what you need, but it operates on both a windows and a Mac. OK, you can download this software on every single computer you own for the for your entire lifetime. Once you buy a license, it is yours. You are not limited to one computer to a computer no more. OK, and uh, it does not require a dongle. So there's no little USB you have to put in in order to use the software. It is so incredibly simple to use. If you cannot get thumbnail or Billy Lou to work on your MacBook, um, Put in a ticket with Embrilliance uh, and ask them for some support. I love them. They are here in the U.S. Brian Bale is the um, he's the heart and soul of Embrilliance. And he used to, uh, if you ever had the old, old, old 100 years ago software for Baby Lock, it will look very, very much familiar to you. OK, so that place has been around. That software has been around a long time. Plus, there is so much free training for brilliance on YouTube. I do. I use it all the time in my videos. Lisa Shaw has a ton of videos. She's a brilliance educator and it's all free. So that those are the reasons that I recommend it. Uh, I don't like, uh, my camera is mirrored. It's driving me crazy. I don't like a uh, software that doesn't give me free training because I want to use it. Right. Okay. So I'm going to jump into in brilliance and let you take a look at this and I, we're going to talk about workflow so let me share my screen with you this is not a commercial for brilliance you guys you can do this with any kind now see that's not what i wanted to share with you guys let me stop sharing let me make sure i got this working yeah i'm gonna uh, turn that one off no i don't want to save that and i'm gonna close that one and i don't want to save it no okay here we go let me do this again. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Share screen and window and here it is. Perfect. All right. So let me go back into 3D. This is the block that we are going to look at today. Now, there's a couple of things I want to point out to you in this in Brilliance um, software. So again, this is very much like let me pop back over to the window so I can, yes, you can see what I'm seeing. Okay. This is very much like 
Word or PowerPoint or anything like that. Over here in this top menu, we've got new, we have open, we have save, we have print and all of that. Okay. And right now I am using what's called essentials. This is the basic uh, module in Imbrilliance. If I wanted to get into Stitch Artist, I would click on this button right up here, but I'm not doing that. Okay. So you've got your main stage right here, and then you have the objects panel. And the objects panel, you will have, there are two elements right here in this object panel. And you can click on the plus sign and you can see what makes up that. All right. And then I'm going to open up this one. And you can see what all makes up that particular one. Down here, we have the properties box. And the properties box shows you the thread color stops. Okay. Um, now, why am I telling you about this? Because I want to show you, let me, um, I'm going to take this one. Very easy, you guys, over here on the picture. I'm going to right click if it'll do it for me and copy. Let me open a new one. Oh, it decided it freezes up. That's my video card doing that because we're sharing. I'm going to right click and copy and I'm going to open up a new and I'm going to right click and paste. All right, so let's look at this one here. When you're doing applique, remember I told you, you have the placement line, the tack down, and the final stitch. And that's what every one of these are. So here we go. Here's the placement line. Now, I'm going to zoom in by rolling the wheel on my mouse. And I'm going to hold down my key, my, my space bar, and watch my little cursor turn into a hand, and then I can drag it down. Okay, so I'm going to turn off 3D so you can see the stitches a little bit better. So you can see default one blue. This is the placement line for that heart. Ignore the fact that it's a blue heart. Okay, just ignore that. It's a placement line for this heart and for this heart. Let me get back over here and see if there's any questions. You guys are doing all good. Everybody looks like they're doing good. Okay. Kim Martin, she couldn't get the CD. If you go to their website to Micro Friends Quilt Shop, the only thing they have in stock right now is the embellishments. Click on that product and scroll down. It'll say, get the CD here. And you click on it and it'll take you to the CD page. And then you can put in your email and they'll send it to you. They're going to come in next week. Okay. Everything looks good. All right. So let me go back over to Umbrilliant. So you guys, all right. Then we have default to orange. Now I want you to ignore these thread colors. Again, these thread colors are just what the digitizer has put in to create a stop. All right. So this default to orange is the tack down line for the applique. Now here we go again with default one blue. And we're now in this second heart right here and this heart down here. Those are the placement lines. And now we've got default to orange. There's the tack down for those hearts. Default one blue, okay. Default two orange. That's the tack, that's the placement, that's the tack down. Let me go back over here and tell you guys something. Um, so you do not have to have embroidery software to do this. Straight up. You do not need it. It'll make your life a lot easier if you have it, okay? That's why I'm showing you this, especially when you have a load of applique like this. And what's key about this and easy about this one is none of them overlap. That matters too, but that's a more advanced kind of thing. Then we've got default one blue. There are these hearts, this one and this one down here. And this one, there's three of them in that one. Default two orange, there's the tack down. And now we're going to get into the final satin stitching. All right. So there you go. So what you have right now, we've got placement, tack down, placement, tack down, placement, tack down. Now, why would you want to use embroidery software for this? Because when it does the placement line, then you need, if you have pre-cut your fabrics, if you've pre-cut 
your fabrics, which is what I always do. You're going to take it to the ironing board and you're going to iron them down. Then you're going to put the hoop back in the machine. And then it's going to run. You can skip the tack down line if you have already pre-cut your fabrics. You can do everything I'm telling you using the needle plus minus button by jumping ahead with thread color stops. Okay. But you don't have to do that. The thing about the multi needle is that if it sees the same color, it's going to run them all at one time. So I want to show you guys this. So let's, um, I'm going to turn 3D back on just so it looks pretty. And it's going to hang because of my video card. And brilliance just clicks right along, you guys. This is because I'm sharing my screen that my video card is going, what? What are you doing? Um, let's see here. Let me see. It's going to say not responding. I'm going to let it do its thing and figure out what it's doing. Okay. So it's not responding right now. So what I'm going to do is I want all of the placement lines to stitch at once. Okay. I want all of them to stitch at once. I want to pull the hoop from the machine one time, iron everything down at one time, put the hoop back in the machine, and then let it finish out its final stitches. Okay. A lot of people will, when they do this on a multi needle, they'll program in a stop after every single step. You don't have to do that if you take a little bit of time in the beginning to be able to, yeah, Pamela, a lot of people would like an instructor like me for Floriani. That stuff is hard. I'm sorry. I have people tell me that all the time. I've never used it. <laughs> so what I like to do is, you know, there's a lot of stuff I want to stitch and I don't have all day. And so what I want to do is streamline my stitching. So you have to kind of get your thinking cap on and think ahead of the process. I've got nine little hearts to stitch right here. I want to stitch the placement lines all at one time, pull the hoop, iron everything down, put the hoop back in. And then the multi needle at that point is just going to stitch all of the colors it's going to stitch without any intervention from me. And this is going to go so incredibly fast when you do it like the way I'm showing you. So, hi, Lynn. First time seeing me live. Thank you. Donna Marie is right. She says, I know it sounds like a lot, but once you do it, it's the only way to stitch in a multi needle. It really, really is. So I'm explaining to you exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to do it and then we'll go over it. Okay. But you guys, when you see this, especially those of you with a, with a single needle machine, you're going to see me do this on the multi needle. And then you're going to be like, Oh, I think I need a, a multi needle machine. <laughs> there we go. It looks like it just, uh, started responding again. So I am going to jump back over to a brilliance and let's see. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all of the placement lines and I'm going to put them together. So all you have to do over here in the objects panel, okay, I'm going to highlight it and not on the words, but believe it or not, there is a little picture right there. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to take the picture and I'm going to drag it and hover it over the one I want it to be after. And it's going to, it's going to hang. There we go. Okay. So now we've got default one blue. There's that placement line for those two hearts. Placement line for those two hearts. See that? I'm going to go down here and I'm going to highlight it. And then you can also do a right click and move earlier. But because you can't see that menu, I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to drag it up and hover it over the one I want it to be after. And then it's going to do that. Okay. There we go. And now I'm going to do this one too. And I'm going to grab it and drag it up and hover it over the one I want it to be after. All right. And that looks like that's it. So now I've got placement line, placement line, placement line, placement line. Pull the hoop, iron down all of my pieces. Okay. 
Now look down here. I've got default one blue. This is that middle heart. This heart, let's see, and this is default two orange, and then it's going to stitch, let's see here. I want to make sure that I get those right. Default one blue, default two orange. That's a decorative stitch, decorative stitch. Okay, these are the final stitches, right? Okay. So I'm trying to figure, oh, that's right. Now this, let's see. This is why I like this too, so I can get in here and figure out what I'm doing. Let me turn 3D on so I can see this. I cannot, oh, there, I, there it is. I see it now. Okay. All right, so there's a decorative stitch on the blue hearts, decorative stitch on the pink hearts. Ah, I see, that is a satin fill. I thought that was an applique and it is not. So that's a satin fill. Now, so let's take a look at this. If I was to take this default one blue, which is a placement line, and move it up, up here under this one so it stitches at the same time, I don't want that. Because this needs to stitch on top of this satin fill. So what you do is, again, the multi-needle will take all the colors that are the same and stitch them all at the same time, whether you tell it to or not. Okay. So what I'm going to do is change this color. And how do I change the color? Very simply, when you click on it, you click the blue tile. This is your color chip that shows you what color, and you just make it a different color. And it doesn't matter what color you make it because you're going to determine the colors at the embroidery machine on the back of the machine. So it's this one. I usually pick the one right below it. I'll double click it. Okay. And it will change the thread color. It's hanging up because of the video card. Okay. Let me get back over here and see. 3D on Kim Martin allows the full stitching to show. You can turn 3D off. And it removes all of that and lets you see all of the underlay that's happening on underneath. Okay. Yeah, I did the giveaway this morning. Yeah, I sure did. So, okay. You guys look like you're on board. Yes, Lee Roddy has that right, Lee. It, the satin stitches first and then the applique. So just because the digitizer used the same placement color schema of default one blue, we don't want that to stitch at the same time as the other default one blues. So you need to give it a different color and that will tell the multi needle don't stitch that with the others. So what you're doing is you're just kind of thinking ahead and reordering your workflow on that. All right, let me get back over here. And it hasn't changed it yet. It is not responding. You guys, I'm sorry. That's it's the screen sharing and it's saying, let me think about this a minute. I'll see it on, on this screen when it decides to go ahead and change the color. So, uh, Carol, we are not having a giveaway today. No, ma'am. No hashtag power tools. No giveaway today. That was this morning on the situation room. Today is just for doing the Kimberbell mini quilts. This is like a class. This is not the situation room. So, Thank you guys. We had a lady who already has claimed her pattern. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Um, yeah, Jill, I don't know PE design 11 either. Uh, I am sorry. I wish I could help you with that, but I don't, you know, the best thing you can do with, if you've got, cause that's expensive software and I get it. And you probably got it as a plus one with your, uh, purchase. If you bought a, you know, if you bought a multi-needle, I'm sure it was offered as a, a, a throw in with that. This is annoying me guys with the, uh, and brilliance that has not changed. It's thinking about it and it hasn't changed it yet. Okay. So I'm going to just click it and tell it. Okay, there we go. So it changed it. So now we have a color change. I want to do the same thing with the tack down. 
If I don't change this color right here, default to orange, it's going to stitch it with the other default to oranges. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to click this, click the color chip, and I get a thread dialog box that pops up. And I'm just going to choose the, dis the, the one right next to it. It doesn't matter. And click OK. So now it's no longer the default to orange. OK. And then we have the decorative stitching. The final stitching. Now this is the final stitching on all these other hearts. And then this uh, 10,000 glide, 10,000 white, that's a decorative stitching on top of that final satin stitching. All right. So I can, I'm going to minimum uh, close this up. Yeah. If you turn 3D on and off, see, now I can see the stitches underneath and you can see the jump threads and all of that. Okay, so I'm going to turn that back on. So, and then you and me is also in the white. Uh, now that I have moved it around, let me come back over here to this other tab. I am going to, I'm just going to highlight it. I'm going to hit delete because I have not modified this one. Remember, I did a copy and a paste onto the new tab. So I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard. And it goes away. Now, here is the background stitching. Yesterday, somebody was upset because she's got a six by 10 hoop and you cannot stitch this in the six by 10 hoop. And in Brilliance, so this is the background quilting from Kimberbell for February for those little hearts. For the you and me block, which is those, the little hearts. Now, let's look at this. When you're and in Brilliance, you can look at the bottom of your screen down here at the bottom, and it says the hoop is the six by 10. Okay. Let's say that's your largest hoop. But over here, this is six and a half by six and a half. It's not going to fit and it won't allow you to stitch it. You want to watch for this red or this orange. That's going to tell you it won't work. You can do this two different ways. This is the block by block by block that is included in the background quilting, but also included in the background quilting is the clear blue tiles. So you can use the six by six Valentine clear blue tile. I'm sorry. Yeah. Clear blue tile for this. And you won't get these outer lines at all. However, when you're putting these blocks together after they're all stitched, you want to use this line right here, these corners. These corners are going to be the ones that you align with each other to sew it so it looks straight and hangs right. Okay. So what you can do with this, you go into the objects panel, you click on the plus sign to look at what's in the design. And let's take a peek at this. Default one blue is the placement line for the batting. Default two orange is the tack down for the batting. Default one blue is the placement line for the fabric and default two orange is the placement line is the tack down for the fabric. And then default 17 turquoise is your background quilting. Okay. Okay. So remember we had default one blue on the other ones. Well, we don't want that, but let's scratch that. What I want to do right now is I want this to fit in my six by 10 hoop. So we can see that the offending stitches is this one right here. That's a placement line for your fabric. My fabric is much larger than this whole thing. So I don't need that. I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard and I'm going to make that go away. Default to orange is my tack down for my fabric. I don't like that. So I'm going to make that go away. Now look, the red box is gone and it will fit in your six by 10 hoop. This is really all that you need because when you trim away your batting, you're going to trim it right next to this line anyway. Okay. This is going to work perfect. So I've got this set now. So I'm going to come back over here to this other tab. I want to highlight this. Not here in the objects panel, but over on the design stage, I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy. And then I'm going to come back over here to this other tab 
And on the design stage, I'm going to right click and paste. There we go. See this? All right. So we have two designs now. There's my background quilting. And then here's this. Now, see, remember I told you guys the multi needle is going to take all of the default one blues and put them together in one run. Okay. I don't want that to happen <laughs> because this is going to stitch right before this because a multi needle will do that automatically without any intervention from you. I don't want to do that. So I want this to be a different color. I'm going to click the color chip. And I already used the periwinkle underneath, so I'm going to choose the next one, the spa blue, and tell it OK. And there we go. Perfect. And this default to orange, I don't want it stitching at the same time as the other default to orange. So I'm going to click this, click the color chip. Um, I already used the neon. I'm going to choose the crocus and tell it OK. Again, it does not matter what color in the software you choose, because you're going to be using your own colors that are on the machine. All right. So let's take a look at this now. I want to do a utility color sort. Okay. Let's go to utility color sort. And it says the design has been sorted, but not reduced. That's okay. And I'm going to tell it new view. New view gives you a new tab that comes up. This looks great. Now look at this. We no longer have two objects. We only have one. And here's what's going to happen. Placement line for the batting, tack down for the batting, and it all fits in your 6 by 10 hoop. Okay. Then it's going to run the background quilting. Let's see what we did. The default one blue. There's all of the placement lines in one time. It's going to stitch every one of them. You're going to pull the hoop, iron down your little hearts, Here's your tack down for your hearts. I don't need a tack down for the hearts because I've ironed them in place. However, you might want to make sure that your tack downs, when it stitches it, you might have some little bits sticking over. So I would go ahead and leave that. You don't have to, but you might want to. And then do a little bit of micro trimming just to make sure that your fabric is snugged up right next to that tack down line. And then it's going to run the blue hearts and your dark pink hearts and then it's going to run your fill for the middle heart there is a placement line for the center and tack down for the center all righty here is your decorative stitching on that one and there is your other There's your decorative stitching on your, that's the uh, red clear vinyl. Now I want to show you guys something. Let's see. This is just me. So this is the white, the white, um, white decorative stitching, white decorative, oh, and then this is the you and me. Okay. Now. For my default to orange tack down, that's going to be all the same color. And you can do that on these particular designs because the satin stitching is so dense that it's going to cover that line completely. It does not matter what it is. All right. So you can choose whatever you want. Now, if you are doing this and your final stitch is a blanket stitch where you can see underneath, then you're going to want to make your tack down stitch if you choose to do that a, a, a coordinating color. Okay. But in this case, it doesn't matter. I'm probably going to use white. It doesn't matter. All right. So as far as I'm concerned, this is done and ready to go. You see? Let me get back over here. Questions? see let me get down more comments the big heart stitch yep okay about that so i deleted both the batting and the fabric placement line to fit into a six by ten yes denise i did for the fabric not no not for the batting just for the fabric fabric placement tack down gone don't need them 
because you have to trim next to that anyway. And that's just a big old basting stitch. You need it, not for this design. Okay. You bought, yeah. Well, you know what, Jill? Um, and brilliance is so inexpensive. You can do this in essentials. It's like $139 or something. It's dirt cheap as far as when it comes to software. Yeah. If you want to buy the fabric for the Sweet Pea Table Runner, it is underneath in the description box. If you'd use my link, I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. So is this making sense, you guys? I'm not talking you through this. I don't want to lose anybody. Okay. So I'm really happy with how this went. So I have now, if you look, there were blue hearts, pink hearts, dark pink, red vinyl, uh, decorative in the middle. You know, we had five different placement lines that you would have had to pull the hoop, iron your stuff down, put it back in, stitch the neck, pull the hoop, put your stuff in, put it back down. Okay. Dave, yeah, now you're ready. You're like, oh, I get this. I think I can do this. I and here's the thing. You'll start to do it and be, stand at your machine and be, be careful because it'll tell you, you know, it'll start doing something. You'll be like, oh, I got the thread color wrong. Yo. Oh, it's double in New Zealand. I'm sorry, Jill. Yeah, well, I would do it. Oh, is it? It's a download too, Jill. That's the nice thing about in brilliance. It's a download. You don't have to wait for anything to roll. There's no shipping. So that's really good too. Yeah. Okie doke. Definitely making sense and excited. Good, Denise. Thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Because I don't want to lose you guys. If I've lost you, it can seem very abstract when you're playing with it, but I, this is to streamline the workflow. If you've got a single needle machine, you definitely want to learn how to do this because that's going to save you a ton, just scads of thread changes. Okay. Can, yeah, yes, Shirley. Absolutely. It can work with a single needle. In, it, it just refreshed. Uh, it does not know. It, Embrace doesn't know whether you're running a single needle or a multi needle at all. So if you do this in your single needle, it's going to run all of the placement lines all at once. And you got on board and you pulled your scan and cut out of the box and you cut all your little hearts and you're ready to go. <laughs> right. And you're off to the race and it just makes it so easy. Can someone show you where it is in the description, but you don't see the sweet pea fabric. Uh, um, I didn't put it there. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'll have it there right after we get off today. If it's not there now. Okay, good. I will tell Mary not having a giveaway, sweetie. No hashtag power tools. Not, not at all. Okay. <laughs> Frito. That's enough. Y'all, she was having a dream. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, I don't wound up. Hey, stop it, please. No. If there's an Amazon truck out there, she's going to lose her mind. Okay, really good and no dongle. Okay, yeah, I don't like that. I used to have Artista, and uh, it had a dongle too, and I could never figure Artista out. It drove me crazy, and I said, you know what? I'm just going to go to something easy, so. I looked at a lot of embroidery software for a lot of years, you guys, and this is what I settled with. I uh, even had another company give me their software to play with, to try to teach y'all. I couldn't make heads or tails out of it. And, I, you know, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'm pretty comfortable with computers and how they think and how they work because I worked in cybersecurity for so long. And I've been messing with computers for 20 plus years. So I'm thinking, that, um, you know, to me, this makes sense. It just makes great sense to me. And that's why I love it, love it, love it. All right. So for those of you that are just joining us, I just went over the workflow change that I did in Brilliance and um, in Brilliance Essentials to make this really easy. Now, I'm what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use the uh, Brother Design Database for and in Embrilliance, I'm going to save this design that I just changed. And let me minimize this. I'm going to save this design that I just changed. Where is it at? Let me make sure I get the right one. It's not letting me jump over there. Come on, video card. I think it's this one right here. 
It's letting me change. I'm going to stop sharing. All right. And now maybe it'll let me do it. Yep. It's letting me jump out into Ugh. computers. Jill started with that Simply Apple K, but then she outgrew it. Yeah. Simply Apple K has a glitch, you guys. It, it, I, Y'all can use it. If it doesn't finish out, get stitched around a shape, then you guys can pull it and put it on your domestic. Um, I can't do that. If I'm in the middle of a video and it decides not to work, that's not good for me as an influencer. I've got to have it working. Okay, so maybe this is the problem. I'm going to turn that off. Maybe I'll just, I don't think it'll let me, it might send it wirelessly, but it's going to think about it in a minute. I cannot get... The streaming software, tell me back on here. It's hanging up. That's why it's tell me not responding. Okay. But I was able to minimize this window. You think you need a new computer because your video is slow? Shannon. Yeah. Girl, Paula, I am on a gaming tower. No, it's the streaming software that is causing this, the hiccup. It's the streaming software doing that. This thing flies around. Now I've got just a giant big, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I went and got this giant uh, gaming desktop. I'm all hardwired in, everything. So I should have sent this over uh, before. So, okay. And it's going to tell me not responding because of the video, the sharing software. But what I want to do is send it over to the machine. And I'm going to get my, where's my USB? I'm going to get a USB. I'm just going to save it to the USB and transfer it that way. Um, who's this? Who's this? Oh, okay. I'm not going to bother with the wireless. I could do it on the, um, it's the PR 1055. What in the world is going on here? Okay. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm going to file, save as stitch and working, and I'm going to save it to the USB. And I'm just going to call it UNB. And PES file format is my embroidery design. I'm going to tell it save. Okay. So I have saved this. You guys didn't see that because I wasn't sharing my screen, but okay. All right. So on a USB, ready to go over to the machine. Okay. You want to start quilting so bad. Well, we'll quilt, Kevin. What's the holdup? Just do it. Just do it. My video is a little fuzzy. Mm, I get you. Okay. I'm going to jump over to my other laptop. I'm going to move over here now. I got my lights on and all that. And I'm going to jump over to the other computer. So let's. There we go. And I need to, let's see. Nope, wrong one. Wrong one. Do this. Mute. There we go. There we go. I have to turn off the audio on the other computer. All right. Nope. Okay. I got it. Audio, video, we're working. My only issue is on the computer or the camera that I have pointing at the uh, multi needle, it's not giving me clean HDMI and I can't figure out why. So, on the video we did yesterday, we talked about uh, your cutaway mesh stabilizer. Okay. We talked about the batting that you need. This is all Kimberbell stuff. And we made the adorable 
the ladybird. Okay. Look what I found. I found her crown. It had fallen under the scan and cut table. <laughs> Let's see. You don't see my birthday on the calendar. I'm sorry, Dave. My uh, executive assistant fails me. Not worth the beans. Okay. We're all good now. I'm all good. Cool setup. Well, this is a hot mess, y'all. Okay. Let me turn on my iron. I've got my little Cricut mini press right here. Okay. And a little steady Betty ironing surface and I'm bump running into things. All right, y'all. I have got my pre-cuts that I did on the scan and cut. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that they work. We'll see. Okay. I've got some foam. There's my little hearts. They were on a piece of tape. These are the little glitter hearts. Those are good, I think. This foam, this is 711F. I didn't have any of the flexi foam that they, it wasn't part of the embellishment kit. So you got to use what you got to use, right? And... Here is my background fabric. Is this the right background fabric? I think so. So I got my background fabric and then I have a little piece of batting. Okay, so I've got my, my Kimberbell batting and I'm golden, ready. I've got all my stuff here. And then I keep a little tray in here. I have got all of my snips. You're going to want your curved, double curved scissors so you can trim in the hoop if you want to. Um, now I have got, I'm going to be using the Brother PR 1055, which is a 10 needle. Okay. When we get finished Monday, when we're putting all these together, okay. I'm going to be trimming the batting and the stabilizer at the same time with the trimmer by George. I've got this link below. This is exclusive to Hoop Sisters, and this makes your life so much easier when you're doing applique. If you guys are going to start getting into all these applique, tree skirts, wall hangings, blah, blah, all that, you're going to want one of these. Definitely. Okay. So let me switch to my other camera. Let me see if it works. It is. See, it says USB streaming standby and all that. I'm sorry, guys. I cannot make that go away. It's driving me crazy. I was playing with it all morning. So you're just going to have to deal. I apologize. I wish you didn't. So I've got my little hub on here. I'm going to pop that in. Okay. And make sure you guys can see what I'm saying. I apologize. That is so annoying. Oh, you have no idea how much that bothers me. It bothers me 10 times more than it does you. And I'm so sorry. Because I did it yesterday. And um, it worked fine and the settings were identical and I don't know what the deal is. So I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so I need to pull up the design and um, from the main screen, I, I'm just gonna choose the USB. This is where your designs are. These are your design choices that are in the machine when you bought it. And then you can save things to the machine and I'm gonna go to the USB. And it's right here. And I'm going to tell it set. Now, the hoop that I am going to put in here. Let's see. Here. Oh, wrong way. Okay. The hoop that I'm going to use in this is the Designs and Machine Embroidery Monster Snap Hoop. Okay. This is an 8 by 12 So this design will fit in here. Um, I've... I rarely use anything else. Most everything that I make will fit in this hoop. And I just love it because it's so easy to do hoopings with it. So what I'm going to do right now is get all this stuff out of the way. I'm going to switch cameras and I'm going to show you guys how I hoop this. <clears throat> Let me point this down. All right. This is the top part of it. You've got this little plastic, corrugated plastic in here. So what I'll do is I take my stabilizer. This is 12 inches wide, okay? And I just lay it on here. I leave about an inch off around here and right here. Another easier way, let me do the top part of it. A little easier. And just put it right there on it. Make sure I've got an inch extra or so all the way around. And I do a real scientific measuring. 
Don't get all wound up in measuring stabilizer. Just make sure you have an inch all the way around and that'll work fine, okay? Now to put this together, I'm gonna use the bottom part, my stabilizer, okay? And then the corrugated plastic, I'm just gonna lay it on about half. Now this hoop has some little indentations on the corners, very handy, but I'm going to, it doesn't matter which way it goes. Okay. It could be the front. It could be the back. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to put that on. Just kind of make sure it's side to side, front to back, right like this. And then you can pull this out like that. Very handy. Also very handy. I'm going to take a marker and in the front, Right here, I'm going to write front. Why? Because this hoop fits into the machine this way or this way. And you'll ruin your day if you get it wrong. Okay. So I've got front right here. That's a real handy little trick. All right. We got newbies. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, you guys. All right. How about that? Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to, you know what, I might not use that camera. That bothers me so much, that particular camera. I'll, I'll move this around so you can see the screen. I'm just going to pop this in. Great. All right. Let me move my iron out of the way. It's in the way of my business here. All righty. So I did put the threads that I need on the machine, I think. I need, I think I've got it all on there, all right? And I, I thread this thing the exact same way I thread the single needle. I cut the thread down here and then tie the new one on, okay? So I leave a good, oh, I don't know, two feet worth of the old thread and then tie the new one on. So I need to pull through the threads on um, three, two, three, and one, four, three, and two. That's it. Okay. So I just unthread the needle with my fingers and pull it through and we're hung up. Why? Okay. I don't need any of that kind of drama in my life. And I will just, um, now, okay, down here at the bottom of the screen, I've got a hoop with some needles. I'm going to touch that and I'm going to go to number four. And the head moves. And then I'm going to put the little hook through the needle. I'll show you guys what's happening down here. I just take my finger and put it underneath those little hooks, wrap it around, and there's a tie right there, or a cutter, and I'll just hit load. Very handy. Go to number three. Do that. Okay, and put the hook. It goes through the needle, just like an old, the old kind, like that, and there we go. And number two, I need to put a red on here. I haven't done that yet. That's what I'm missing is my red. This machine uses, I use the same threads in this machine that I do in my single needle. Okay. I use Isocord Poly. I use uh, Glide. I use, uh, what's the other one? The Dimes Exquisite. And if I have cones, I try to buy the cone and use that one. All right, let me get in front of you all. Okay. And I'm just gonna tie these together, let them think that they're one, just like I did yesterday on the single needle. Okay. Everybody's bringing their trash cans back up. Today was trash day. 
And I'm just going to pull it. I'm going to go to one. There we go. Okay. And needle. So that's how you change the thread. Pretty quick. Pretty easy peasy. Let me see if you guys have questions that I can talk to. Screen view is good as is. Good. Great. Just joining what brand of hoop am I using? Linda, that is a uh, magnetic monster snap hoop from Designs and Machine Embroidery from Dime. Yep, they've got it. Okay. This is good. All right. So I'm going to go tell it. Okay. Let's get in here now and take a look at this. So we are in the edit menu. How's that look? Pretty good. It's not too bad on the glare. Okay. We're in the edit menu right here. So this is where... Uh, remember, we're on a six by 10. I'm going to, uh, this is an eight by 12 hoop, so it'll fit just fine. I don't need to rotate it or anything like that. But I'm going to hit edit end right now. On this menu, you can size. Don't resize it. You'll mess with your applique. Rotate, uh, mirror, whatever you need. I don't need to do any of that. I'm just going to hit edit end. Now we're getting into this one. We've got three spools right here and this is where we're going to manually put in our thread colors if your three spools are grayed out you need to go into your menu down here at the bottom i want to make sure you can see this and you're going to uh what page i can't remember um i think it's like seven jump over to page five Six, seven, manual color sequence. Make sure that is on. If it's off, your little three spools will be grayed out. So you want manual color sequence on. Okay, I'm gonna tell it okay. So now I've got my three spools. All right, here we go. So we've got one of 17 thread color changes we're gonna have here. Let me find, I wanna find something other than my big old finger. I've got a deal. I think this will work. Okay. So up here is the preview. This is the design as a whole. This column right here corresponds to the thread color stops in the design. These two columns, one through five and six through 10, correspond to the spools that are on the back of the machine. I've got a preview window. We have a one through 17 color stops. We have a hand to tell the machine to stop. We have a do not stitch and we have an OK button. This is all we need right here. So the very first stitch is the placement line for my batting. I don't really care what color that is, but I'm going to do it in white. OK, so white is on spool number six. So my one change to a six. OK, that's the placement line for my batting. I need the machine to stop so I can put my batting on. So what I need to do now, th it, this is a little backwards. You might think it would stitch and then stop. It does not. It stops and then stitches. That's how this machine works. So I'm going to go to number two. Before it stitches number two, I need it to stop. So I'm going to put a hand up. Stop what you're doing, okay? That is the batting tack down line. And I want that to stitch in white as well on spool number six. If you are not using a trimmer by George, before the next stitch stitches, you're going to want it to stop so that you can trim away that excess batting from around the batting tack down line. Okay. All right, y'all. Now I'm looking at this. Okay. So I can see what colors I need. My... Uh, my little blue heart, I'm just going to run all of these in blue. This next stitch is, oh, this is my background quilting. I'm sorry. And I want that to be in white. So I'm going to run the background quilting in number six, and that's going to happen in white as well. Now, here is all of these little hearts. I'm going to zoom in and show you what it did. I'll show you. Let me see here. Let me get right in here real tight can you see that look at that all of the placement lines are going to stitch at one time that's awesome sauce 
and I want to see them. So I'm just going to do them on spool number seven. Okay. The next stitch, let me back out. Before the next stitch happens, which is the tack down, I want it to stop so I can iron all of my little hearts on. And then I want that to stitch. Oh, I want this to stitch. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put that there. So this is all of my background hearts. I, yeah, that's on spool number seven. Before the next one, I want it to stop so I can iron my hearts on. And then I want that to just stitch. It can stitch in number seven as well. It'll be the blue as well. It doesn't matter because the final satin stitch will cover everything, all right? And now the next one, that is the final satin stitch for the blue hearts. That'll be spool number seven. Let me make sure. Placement line, stop, iron everything down, put the hoop back in, stitch the final satin stitching for that one, good. The red is going to be, let's see, oh, that's the dark pink. We'll do that, spool number nine. Next one, this is a red, uh, number one. Or actually, that's going to be, I want that to be a dark pink as well. Number seven. See, you can change whatever you want on here. It's great. This is my placement line for that little heart. I will do that number six. And... That's the tack down before it happens. I need it to stop. I'll do that in six. That's white. There is my decorative stitch. That's gonna be spool number nine. All right. I think I need a dark pink that I don't have on here. I'm gonna go grab a dark pink and change it up, I think, yeah. I didn't plan this well. Doesn't matter. Let's see. The dark pink. I'm going to do that on number 10. I'm going to put a dark pink on it. Do I have a dark pink in my drawer? Yay, I do. I do, I do. That's great. I don't have to walk away. Good. All right. Next. That's the red. That'll be spool number one. All right. Now this I can't hardly see. What is that? I think that's in white. That's the decorative stitching. Decorative stitching, white. The last one, it's automatically six. We're going to do spool number six. And number seven is a do not stitch. And I'm going to tell it, do not stitch. All right. I do want to go back. I think those, I want to be spool 10 as well for the dark pink that I'm going to put on there. Okay, there we go. That's how easy that was. All righty. Let me see if I'm missing anything from y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Screen view is good. Great. What brain? Okay. Uh, good. You guys don't have any questions. That's amazing. Either everybody went to sleep or went to breakfast or whatever. I need my scissors. Hold on. I'm going to do my little snips. My grew legs. See, this is why I always put my stuff back in the thing and I didn't do that. They're probably here under the paper or something. I need to put, go ahead and put this new color on. So this just changes the amount of time. The workflow is just crazy fast when it gets to this. Now this machine is quite loud. Okay. And it's it, like I said, it's going to sound like you're at the range. Okay. I'm going to go back into my needle. Uh, and I'm going to go to spool 10 and the head will move and pull that through. This is the Brother PR 1055 Entrepreneur Pro. Love this machine. This is spanky. Thread my needle. Okay, we're ready to go. So I'm going to tell it okay. So we are now ready to get out of that edit mode. Put you back over here so you can see. Zoom you guys in. You can see what I'm doing. I'm going to tell it okay. And I'm ready to hit embroidery. And we're ready to go. 
Okay. Now on this screen, what you've got is a preview of what it is that you're fixing to stitch. Here is the stitch order, the color stop stitch order that you've got. Okay. Now this, if I were, if I had assigned thread colors in the machine to each one of the spools, that's what these are right here. Okay. But I haven't. So I ignore that completely. This one, it says it's one minute and it's in red, uh, probably less than a minute. It's zero through 16 color stops. It's 16,132 stitches. And it says it's going to take 29 minutes. And I've got a return. I've got, which I can get back into edit mode if I want. I have a hand to stop it. This is a magic wand where I can go in and manually change the thread color. Here's my needle plus minus button. You do that if you made a boo-boo when you set it up in the edit mode. And then I'm at a thousand stitches per minute and I can increase or decrease that right here. And then again, I have a lock button and you always have to hit lock and that will turn that green. Here's your trim, needle threader and all that. So we're ready to go. I'm going to hit lock and go. So, okay, I'm going to move this out of here and it's going to do its thing. I am using Filtech magnetic bobbins. These have a magnetic core in them. I told you it's loud. I'm not going to do all the set and stitch. See that little black ring? That's a magnet. That fits right in the back of the machine. The other side doesn't have that. Okay. There. It stopped because I put a hand up and told it, hey, you need to stop what you're doing because I need to do something with you. And I've got a little heart on now I don't want. So I'm going to put my batting. Make sure my I don't have any other. Yep, see, I had a piece of applique under there. <laughs> that batting, everything sticks to it, y'all. <laughs> I'd be digging around. Where's that heart? There we go. Lock and go. It's going to tack it down. You don't have to tape it. You can if you want. But you don't have to. Okay. The needles for this machine... These are organ needles. They're HAX 130 EBBR, number 11. These are the needles I use in this machine. Again, they're organ, and the machine is timed with them at the factory. These needles come in your little kit that you get. This is part of your accessory kit that you get with the machine. Okay. Uh-oh, I should have put a stop in. Because I should have put that stop there. So I'm going to put down my background fabric. I don't think it tied off. It didn't. Y'all didn't say something. <laughs> I blame you guys. There, now. Now I can stitch down the, uh, the fabric for the background. There we go. Can I catch? Yeah. And now it's doing the background quilting. wanted to what I did with my phone I wanted to show you guys the app that is great for this I guess my phone's in the other room are those bobbins in my storefront no ma'am they are on Amazon that's where I buy them they are in my Amazon store it's uh, amazon.com slash shop slash power tools with thread those bobbins work so well. I absolutely love them. Oh, 
I do have the teal hearts, Carol, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go get my phone. I wanna show you guys the Brother app. I'll be right back. You can watch that stitch. Now it's going to start stitching the placement lines for all of the little hearts. So you guys, there is this app. It is called My Connection. It's a little blue brother little thing here. It says turn on wireless LAN. I don't know why it says that. I've got wireless LAN turned on. Let's see here. Spanky, touch Spanky. There it is. The design popped up, okay, and it shows me where it is. It tells me it's on five of twenty-nine minutes in, and it tells me that it's stitching. So I'll have my phone with me, and then as I'm wandering around anywhere, it'll tell me if it had a thread break. Or if the need a design, you know, if I need to come do something with it, it'll tell me. Great. That's the brother my stitch monitor. Yep, you use yours all the time. Okay. Oh, Mull Queens has trimmer by George on sale right now. Excellent. Kim, be sure to use uh, coupon code PTWT for free shipping. stopped and now it is ready for me so my phone just told me hey brother stitch monitor says uh, I've got a notification it says uh, paused so now I can just dismiss it and it told me that it stopped how cool is that all right so I am missing one of my little hearts it, it wandered off and that's okay I've got uh, Oh, here it is, right here. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. It is it. There we go. So I'm just looking at the paper right here. And I'm going to put my little hearts where I think they ought to go. And I will need to do some micro trimming on these. But you see how easy this is? So now it just stopped one time. Tack that down. And I just need to um, get these where they need to go. This is heart number six. Again, it doesn't matter what color is going to be used because the satin stitching will cover all of this. Okay. The big heart, wait, let's see. This one doesn't go there. 
I don't know. I happen to some of my hearts, you guys. You know what? That might all that might even might not even be apple K. I don't know. It is so strange. It had other fabrics. All right, here's the little one. Hmm. No, we use this one right here. Yep, that went backwards. My vinyl. I don't know why that did that. Let me put my vinyl ones down. Look under my paper. Yeah. <laughs> no. Put that. It needs. It needs a. Uh, Pressing sheet. Okay. Pressing cloth. Let's see these little ones. This one is right here. Yeah, I should have mirrored these. Yeah, no big deal. Did I move that? I don't want to move that. That looks good. Um, we'll do this one too. So this is the whole point behind doing a color sort. Yeah, you're welcome for the free shipping. Absolutely. You are more than welcome. He's probably going, what is going on? What's Becky doing? <laughs> I'm going to have to trim this one up. And... So this is the dark turquoise. Yeah, it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do, I have this other one that uh, I've got a little piece that will cover it. Yeah. All of the pieces from this have to be mirrored. I'm just going to, um, I think I'm going to put this down with some tape. because I'm going to trim it up quite a bit. And then that one is the light pink. Y'all, I make mistakes like it's my job. It's fine. I, just roll with it. Just roll with it like that. Okay. That one, tack it down. Yeah, those are usually 40 bucks, so that's a deal. Get one. You're going to want it. You'll use it for, I have two of them. I have one here and one at the coast. So everywhere I've got an embroidery machine, I have a trimmer by George. Okay, I'm ready to run the tack down stitches now. That's going to do them all at one time. Cool is that? That'll work fine. This goes with the rest. Oh, here's that heart. I found it. Good. see thank you for the 1055 demo oh you have a new 1055 kim excellent good for you yeah you're gonna love playing with that machine um i was terrified of mine i mean it sat in the corner for three or four months before i actually got to do anything with it but it's fine everything um i've got a lot of videos i have a playlist I think, I think I have a playlist for the 1055. So you can take a look at that. And I walk you baby step by baby step. Anywhere I see, if the playlist says multi-needle, I'm using the 1055. And it'll take you through it. Um, the Baby Lock uh, Companion, identical, same menu, same pictures, everything. So if you have that machine, that will work as well. Yeah. 
you guys are all over that free shipping. Yeah, that's cool. He's got that. How much is he selling it for? I, I think probably to the 1055, it might come with the manual color sort off. So you, you'll have to go in and take a peek at that. Um, I have rarely ever used a playbook. I do have the playbook for the Entrepreneur Pro. I used it to kind of uh, get an idea for stuff, but I never really did anything in the playbook. So I've got some trimming to do, y'all. Mm, that's okay. It's fine. You guys are going to come to Mo Queens in April. We are going to be cutting fabric with the Scan and Cut just like last time, but we're going to do something very cool with the Brother Luminaire. And I'm going to show you guys how to digitize hand stitching. So if you're ever doing a quilt, like Lori Holt will do this a lot. She'll have an applique. And then what do you do? Oh, stop. You already did that lock. Why is that doing? Yeah. Um, let me lock in. I forgot to tell it to stop again. That's the thing. You kind of got to watch when you do this. It's very handy to have it done right. All right. I'm going to trim these out. Now, this is why I put front, because what if I popped it in backwards, right? It's entirely possible to be able to do that. So... Now, when you are trimming applique, if you are right-handed, you want to trim clockwise so that the lower blade is closest to the stitch. That's a little trick. If you try to trim counterclockwise, you're going to get a larger uh, excess around. You won't get as close to the stitching as you would like. So this is very handy to know to trim clockwise. If you're left-handed and you've got left-handed scissors, trim counterclockwise. You want the lower blade to be as close to the fabric stitching as possible. Okay, that one's good. I think that'll be okay. Get these a little bit. I've got a whole bunch to pull up here on this one. What were you thinking? I don't I'm going to get this up. Again, though, I will do micro trimming all day long versus having to, uh, you know, do this to each and every one of them. The industry standard on the satin stitch is three millimeters. So as long as your little bits of edges are within the three millimeter millimeter and a half inside and outside of that final tack down, you should be okay. Okay. I think that's probably fine. I think that'll work. Hopefully I got the thread colors right. <laughs> all right. All right, you guys. So all that's left now we have some additional applique that needs to happen in, with the big heart, but it's going to really get loud in here and get to stitching quite a bit. So this is the benefit to doing all of that up front, making sure that everything is going to be uh, – it does embroider like a dream. Marilyn has one. It does. I – rarely have any trouble with this thing at all. It just is so smooth. It, it's this side of being an industrial machine. And it's going to do, it just doesn't, it, it, it's like, go ahead and go about your business and I'll holler at you if I need anything. This is not like a single meal at all. It's just wonderful. Beautiful, beautiful stitching. Go back to that other blue one there. There we go. 
So it's great. So now it's just going to do its thing and stitch all of that. And it's, it really doesn't need any intervention from me at all. It is going to run out of bobbin thread here in a little bit. I wanted to show you guys what to do. I think it's going to run out of bobbin thread. It should. But I didn't have a full bobbin in there when I started. It's how pretty that is. Let me get you guys in here real close so you can see. It's beautiful. It does the underlay. use a different thread color, but it's fine. Very nice. No thread changes from me, you guys. That's what I'm talking about. This is what it's all about right here. Uh-oh, you know what? I'd rather have a different pink on there. So what am I going to do? I, can, I don't even have to tear this out. I'm going to show you guys how you can do this. I'm going to, to stop the machine, because you'll do this. You'll be like, oops. All right, so let's talk about this. I do want to have a different pink on there. I shouldn't have changed that one. Okay. Should have left it as it was. Let me show you how to do this. All right. First thing I need to do is cut the bobbin thread. So I'm going to hit, so I, I hit the red button. I hit, it was green. I hit it, made it stop. I'm going to hit lock and now the scissor and it will cut the thread. All right. Now, if you want to remove those stitches, you can, and I am going to, because I'm going to go over them with a lighter color. So when you need to remove stitches in embroidery, the easiest way to do that. Let me show you guys. You can, depending on how much you have to do, this is just a little bit, so I'm not gonna go get the, the embroidery stitch ripper or anything like that. You can use a seam ripper. You wanna work from the back of the hoop. There are also these gizmos. Let me get this. These are, mm -hmm. this one, no, it's too big. These are hoop pads from Designs and Machine Embroidery. These are very, very handy because you're working with a recessed area, okay? So the idea is, is that you can put this down and then you can put your hoop over it. I will link to these below. They're not below right now. And now it's got something to keep it from getting pushed and the, anything getting pulled and it won't be floppy in the hoop. So I'm just going to use, do I have... I don't have one of my seam rippers right here, do I? I do not. So I'm just going to use these snips. So let me show you what a good embroidery stitch looks like from the back. Let's look at a healthy embroidery stitch. Just trying to see what you guys can see on my hoop here. Mm. Where, where am I? Oh, I need to be over here. There we go. Okay. So a healthy embroidery stitch has a real wide bobbin thread on the back and then a narrow on either side. That's a real healthy embroidery stitch like that. See how you can see the white and the blue barely on the outside. So all you have to do, I'm gonna switch this around so it's easier, put it a little closer to me and move this so you guys can see. You can take a seam ripper or your little snips and you just wanna go underneath that uh, the bobbin thread. That's all you need to do. And what you're doing is you're going to loosen that up. Don't do this from the top because you run the risk of do, uh, doing some damage on your fabric or your applique or whatever you've got. So I might have a little bit. I'm going to try to get that dark pink knot. Get that out of there. May get it all, may not. Not a big deal. It'll all get covered 
But now when I come back to the front, I can just take the scissor or my fingernail and these stitches will just pull right up. See that? That's how you get rid of stitches in embroidery. Look at that. Came up. It'd be fine. That's great. I love it. I've got a little bit of red on there still. Not much. If I wanted to take the time and go through, I could, but I'm changing it to a different color paint. Oh, I'm too close. White out. There we go. So you guys can see it turned out pretty well. Okay. So now I'm going to put it back in. Let me show you how to change your colors on the fly. I'm going to put my hoop back in, making sure it says front to the front. So to change your color on the fly, you've got to go back to the beginning of that color. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into needle plus minus first. And all you have to do is touch that and it'll go back to the beginning of that stitch. There, the hoop moved and it went back to the beginning of stitch number seven. I'm going to tell it okay. Now I'm going to go into the uh, magic wand and I'm going to tell it I want instead for you to stitch on spool number nine. And so it switched to number nine and it gives you a magic wand icon on that to tell you that's different than what you originally wanted to do. Now I'm going to tell it okay and lock and go. Okay, that's how you do that. That's how you change thread colors on the fly. I think it'll work. Yeah, that looks great. I'm gonna cover up that red. Very good. All right, you guys. Pause this. Okay. All right. So this is a really loud and it can be really annoying. I know. That's the way it is with these machines. So I am going to let this finish stitching, but um, that's pretty much, you. I've told you everything that I can tell you about this. I will be trimming these on Monday at 10. We will do our finishing. So uh, you've got some homework if you're making this right along with me to go ahead and get all the blocks stitched. And then we will trim them up on Monday and sew them all together and put the backing and the binding on and have ourselves our little mini quilt ready for February. So um, how are you guys? We got any questions I need to do get to here or anything? Okay, I'm just see if you guys have any, have any other questions. I don't see any. So what are you guys talking about? 3510 for the trimmer by George. That's good. That's good because it's I, it's like 40 bucks is usually. So that's good with free shipping. Ta-da! And if you're buying from out of state, you may not have to pay sales taxes on it either. So... Um, the metal L bobbins will work in the PR 1055. Absolutely. Yeah, I've used them before. Uh, you, you can do that. Yep. I've done that with um, metallic thread to do, you know, freestanding lace. You certainly can. Yeah. I'm, it's completely up to you. Give it a shot. See if it works. If you only use the Filtech magnetic bobbins in this machine, then you're limiting yourself not being able to do any lace. So uh, freestanding lace. So I've done it with the Kingstar metallic in the bobbin, no problems, just to let you guys know. So anyway, um, yeah, so everything else, this thing is just going to go on and stitch for another, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, and it's going to be really loud. But um, if you guys have questions about what I've done, shoot me an email, powertoolswiththreadedoutlook.com. I'm happy to uh, answer your questions for this or leave a comment below the video and I'll let you know, um, you know, and I'll answer it there because if you're thinking about it, somebody else might be as well. So, okay. All right. Talk to your tech about it. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. 
Anyway, all right, you guys. So this has been a lot of fun. You've got homework to do, and I hope that you have a fabulous weekend. I hope you can join me in the Situation Room on Monday morning. Again, if you are thinking about getting in Brilliance, the coupon code expires on the 15th. So my link is right below. I'll put the links into the other stuff that I used in here if you're interested in getting a magnetic hoop or uh, maybe the pads. Very, very handy. Don't feel like you have to. If you don't want to get these, just wad up some batting and put it under there. It works the same. Okay. Certainly can do that. All right. So I will see you guys on Monday. Y'all have a good weekend. Go sew something. Bye.